This week on Let's Talk Schools, we're going to be exploring the new balanced scorecard, something that the board created many years ago. Hi, I'm Mike Looney, the superintendent of schools here in Fulton County. Welcome to another session of Let's Talk Schools. Today, we're going to be talking about the balanced scorecard, something that the school board created many, many years ago. Uh, but we re-envisioned it thanks to the leadership of Dr. Emily Bell, the chief information officer and the executive director of strategy and governance, Dr. Ryan Moore. Um, Y'all have been working for a couple of years now and we have a finished product. And so Dr. Emily Bell, will you please just tell us a little bit about yourself and then uh, Dr. Moore, if you'll do the same, and then we'll get right into uh, the balanced scorecard dashboard. And I'm just gonna be quiet because you two are the experts and I'm just eager for the public to know about this new digital version of the dashboard. So Dr. Bell. I am eager about the public to know about it as well. I am Emily Bell, I'm the Chief Information Officer for Fulton County Schools. And it is my pleasure to bring forward some of the most important work um, that I have done in my career. Uh, as you mentioned, for the last two years, I've been collaborating with Dr. Moore on a digital transformation for the balanced scorecard. The balanced scorecard is a tool that the Board of Education adopted some 20 plus years ago. It actually was developed by two Harvard professors, Kaplan and Norton, and they published an article about this in 1992. And our innovative Board of Education looked at this work and said, hey, this is a great scorecard, a success indicator for business. We want to use it in our schools as well because we measure more than just learning and teaching, which is our core business. We measure other things like business operations, we measure finance, we measure stakeholder input. So we began looking at this, uh, what was originally an Excel file with hundreds of rows of point in time data. And we began looking at how we could create a dashboard, an interactive dashboard. So our data team uh, leveraged Power BI to create this interactive dashboard where uh, now you can filter, if you only care about a specific school, you can filter by that school and all the other data disappears and you're only looking at data for that school. So we're really proud that we're able to uh, publish this now live on our website for the public to okay. inform decisions and really be innovative in the space of data transparency. Excellent. And Dr. Moore, a little bit about your background and you're one of the, the co-inventors of the digital version of the dashboard. Tell us yeah. a little bit about background and, and where you had this decision with Dr. Bell. Yeah, and thank you, Dr. Looney. Ryan Moore and I've been in the district for almost 16 years now as both a teacher, principal, and a district leader in several roles. And, you know, I, I think Dr. Bell hit on a lot of important points, but the board really did capitalize on this idea of data transparency and looking at the district on more than just assessment results, but really thinking about our operations across the board, everything from transportation to assessment results and even some of our HR and finance functions. And, and this really started with, you know, Dr. Bell and I coming together and thinking, okay, we need to present the balanced scorecard as we've done every year for the last 20. And as we reviewed the data, we said, you know what? I think that we can do more than this. And, you know, kudos to our board because we took the idea of expanding, redesigning, and making it more accessible to our public, to our staff, and to all of our community stakeholders. And, and our board jumped on the idea. And so the last two years has really been a cycle of iteration as we've really broken down what are the important metrics to Fulton County Schools? How do our different data systems interact? And what are ways that we can visualize all these different data sets so that, that everyone, our students, our parents, our staff, and our board can access data readily and then be able to ask the questions that are important to them. Um, and I think that that's the big difference here. You know, uh, a PDF version versus a digital dashboard, people will have their opinions, but I think what everyone will see is that all of the data that we think is important is now accessible to everyone in a very public, transparent way, 
And there are several resources that in collaboration with our communications team, we've tried to help guide people along the way, explaining all the different acronyms that we use, guidelines for how different data is calculated. So this has become more than just a data presentation, but a, a living, breathing project to really help build data literacy amongst all of our stakeholders that will hopefully lead to continuous improvement efforts in so, the district. So I have, uh, when I first arrived and I heard about the balanced scorecard, I conceptualized it as an annual report card of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave a public report to the board on various data elements, how we did on milestones, how much money we spent per pupil, lots of, you know, how often the buses were on time, all that sort of thing. The, what's, what's different about that and the newest version? Can y'all speak to that? Well, the newest version allows you, as Ryan mentioned before, to really look at what you want to look at. Before, we put that together based on the board's input for the public. You had no choice in what you were looking at. So now there is choice. And I'd really like to uh, piggyback on what Dr. Moore was saying about living and breathing. Um, understand that metrics change. You know, some, uh, we used to give a different nationally normed assessment than we give today. So the metrics for that former nationally normed assessment went away, and now we have added a different one. It's going to live and breathe as the metrics change. One of the things that we're most proud of with uh, the, this platform is the fact that some of our data visualizations are updated nightly to wow. reflect the most current data. When that is possible, um, the end user will see a tiny little clock in either the upper right hand or lower corner of the data visual, and it indicates that it's updated nightly. If it's not, we show a tiny camera, and that's to indicate that that data is a snapshot. For example, milestones data. Milestones tests are only taken once a year, so we capture that one time a year. And so it lives there as a snapshot, but when we can, we update it nightly. So Dr. Moore, can you give an example of something that's updated nightly? Because this really is transformational in this, in this sense. You know, a report card is really a report of how you've done. Mm -hmm. But when you're, when you're updating the data as often as it can be updated, it's really almost a report card every single day of, of the year. Right. Uh, so what are some of the examples, some examples of things that are updated on a regular basis, if you can yeah. recall? Dr. Looney, I think, you know, Dr. Bell hit on a really important, you know, piece of this is that there are pieces of data that we do need to measure almost every day. And so I think one of the big changes to your original question of what's changed, we've gotten more expansive. Rather than only looking at those point in times, we have given these nightly updates to a lot of important data, and I think, one that sticks out to me is attendance. Attendance is taken daily for students, and so you can now view student attendance in a couple of different ways in this dashboard, and that updates on a nightly basis. So you can see the percentage of students who have attended, and what is that daily attendance rate above 90%. That's updated on a nightly basis. But then you can also see, because our board established new policies for attendance, different categories on where students fall in terms of attendance intervention. And so what that allows our staff to do is not wait until the end of a semester or an end of a year to actually start to intervene on behalf of students. They can check that report daily, every single morning or every single afternoon, and start to get a specific list of students at their level that they need to start providing interventions for. Uh, I think that that's a, a huge benefit to this new dashboard is that we're not just looking at those lagging indicators of performance. We've expanded all of these different categories and part of the work, and the best part of the work, is that we worked with all of our division leads and department owners to think about that data set. What are the data sets that we can pull on a nightly basis? What are the ones that we only report a year? And so I think that process has helped everyone get on the same page as well. So attendance is one example but there are several throughout the dashboard that sure. are indicated by the sure. camera or the clock. Now, Dr. Bell and Dr. Moore, I know one of the common concerns that I hear as the superintendent is data security, yes. privacy. So now that we are publishing all this data uh, for the world to see, how do we make sure that we're not disclosing information that's private 
and that you know bad actors can't come in. Of course, they're always trying, but what's that? We've done everything we can do to protect uh, our data. Well, I'll take that question. As the chief information officer, I'm also the chief data security officer, and security is a priority for our teams. Um, where student privacy is concerned on this dashboard, there is no student level detail available. It is only aggregate data, percentages, large raw numbers. And if a, an end user was to go to a specific screen and maybe choose a couple of filters, uh, they, they may see no data displayed in the middle of the screen. And that would represent too few students. So if the data represents 10 or less students, we don't even show it because through that, um, an end user might be able to figure out, okay, what student is this? So that was not just our idea. That is definitely best practice when you're considering publicly, publicly displayed data. Um, we, we follow best practices from the Georgia Department of Education, from the Georgia Office of Student Achievement, and we collaborated with Microsoft because Power BI is one of their uh, platforms. Do you all know of any other district that has, and I'm not trying to brag about Fulton County Schools, although that's my task, my job, right? I, I honestly don't know of another district that has such a comprehensive digital dashboard. Do you all know of, I know that we have colleagues from across the country. Are there other people working on this? Are we a, are we a line leader in this? Where, where are we on this issue? Yeah, I, I can speak to that a little bit. Just in conversations with the Metro Atlanta area districts and some of my colleagues across across this space, some of the work that we're doing is, is really awe-inspiring and jaw-dropping. And so when we talk about this balanced scorecard dashboard and, and what we are making available to the public, the filtering capability and the expansiveness, to be able to not only view assessment results but also our financial health or our talent functions through our human resources department and to have all of that in one spot um, is really leading the way, um, not just for Metro Atlanta, but I believe the country. Um, I think another area, and this was thanks to Dr. Bell and our CFO Marvin DeReef, all of our information about the American Rescue Plan and the grant dollars that we received during uh, the COVID-19 recovery is available on that dashboard as well. So you can track the dollars spent on different initiatives. I, I really think that we've used this as an opportunity to put our best foot forward and really show that transparency is important in Fulton County Schools. So I'm gonna ask y'all both this question. So both of you answered if you don't mind. Give me the why. Okay, we've, we've invested hundreds and hundreds of hours, employee staff time, creating a dashboard. What's the why, why? why? I'll start and say that number one, it's a Board of Education initiative here in Fulton County Schools. So we were tasked with generating this data for 20 plus years, we just wanted to transform it in a very powerful way. But also the why, and it's always been the why for the board, is to use that to inspect what we expect, to inform decisions. And I also think that down the road, we'll begin to see our district strategic plan align with balanced scorecard metrics as we track our success. I would say the same thing, Dr. Looney. Our, our board, you know, both past and, and current board are very strategic minded people and they've always wanted to be able to measure the different work that we do and be able to provide that view to our taxpayers, to our community, to our parents, to let them know that, you know, what we say we're gonna do, we're doing and we're doing it well. And if we have areas that we need to improve, here's where they are. So it's really about bringing transparency into the work because you know educational institutions, you know, they're they're, they're um, complex and dynamic, and it's sometimes sometimes it's hard to to see through all the stuff and and look at individual pieces of data. But here, the average mom or dad or interested citizen can go where where can they get to this wonderful dashboard? If you go to our Fulton County Schools webpage, at the very top there are certain links. Look for board. This balance scorecard belongs to the board. So you'll find the link to the balance scorecard on the board page 
under board resources. So go to the website, look for board, and then look for the balance scorecard dashboard. Yes. Thank you all so much for this very informative session. I know we're going to have thousands and thousands of hits on the balance scorecard dashboard because people want to see what we're doing and uh, you know, make sure that we're using the resources that we have, the precious resources that we have wisely. Once again, thank you all. Thank you thank so you. much for tuning in to another session of Let's Talk Schools. Um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. And now let's go around the district in 90 seconds. That's it for our show this week. Let's keep the conversation going. We'd love to hear from you on our social media platforms. Join us next time on Let's Talk Schools. And as always, thank you for watching.